I live in Los Angeles now, and I was flown in by Wavelength to play a nostalgia reunion show at this sort of the nostalgia reunion evening of, it's like the Dinosaurs of Rock Night of the Wavelength 10th anniversary. Um, so lots of bands that haven't been together are playing, um, freshening old wounds. I was in like nine bands and played Wavelength every weekend for months. I played every night of Wavelength's fourth or 2004 festival in some form or another. Um, it, was that, it was that kind of thing. I don't know. So they, they invited me back because at a certain point in time I was a big deal around these parts with this stuff. <laughs> saw some great shows at Wavelength, so many great shows at Wavelength. I saw so many duds at Wavelength too, but at the same time, like, it doesn't really matter. It's just nice that you can do it. And it's nice that it's being done, whatever it is, in a capacity that you can easily understand. Or not easily understand, but in a capacity that seems to me to make the most sense possible. It seems like something that should just happen automatically. It seems like something that just makes sense. I mean, it's not like there's a lot of existing support for, um, people starting bands. It's not like in Sweden or something like that where there's a, like they actually have like a program to generate more pop music from Sweden. So it's not like an accident, you know, that they produce all that smooth pop music. It's because there's a, an academic stream of study geared towards producing stuff, sort of like ABBA, you know, like internationally useful pop, JJ, whatever, all that stuff. Uh, that stuff is all sort of a product of a Swedish machine. We have no such thing, and they canceled Brave New Waves, so uh, there's no way to actually even learn about weirder or different music. So there's, it's the kind of thing that you'd think people would just make for themselves anywhere, um, but it turns out to have been relatively unique. What's really good about Toronto is it's it's built in modesty. Um, I think Toronto is a, a really funny place and it helps. I think it really helps. It helps that um, in a way it's kind of a shame that so many people became genuinely successful uh, because it actually sort of created a dream or a pantheon of sort of celebrity that in a way clouds over the fact that everyone's just normal people. And Canada's specifically good. Like this is one of the things that people who feel like they're, they, they should become celebrities, Canadians who feel like they should become celebrities hate about Canada, is that they'll, they, or Toronto at least, is that they, feel that they will always kind of just be some guy to people or that guy to some people. And the farther we get away from that, the more toxic the social situation becomes because the less likely it is for people to regard who, people who are normal people as abnormal people. Um, that's stigmatizing and terrible. If it's a consequence of success or if it's a consequence of um, them having a humpback or something like that, or like being an albino in a season where all the villains in major cinema, major mainstream cinema are albinos or something like that, that stigma is real and unfortunate. Um, so yeah, I think what's good about Toronto is how normal people manage to be here. Um, and that's that's our real strength. Hang on, we're writing a paper here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. What's the 